With the 2024 trade deadline officially over, I realized something. The playoffs are only a month away. And that got me thinking, which teams will make the playoffs this season in the end? How much does a trade deadline influence my predictions? And who actually ends up winning the cup in the end? Well, today I'm going to be making my post-trade deadline playoff and Stanley Cup predictions, going through the entire playoff race to see who makes it and who doesn't, and who ultimately wins the Stanley Cup in the end. So make sure you watch till the end as we go through everything, all the picks and all the teams, and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey and playoff content as we go through the playoffs this year. Crazy that it's almost here. And you know what? Making playoff predictions and talking about them helps me with my existential dread, realizing that we're almost a third of the way through 2024. Oh, Lord. Now, before we get into the actual playoff predictions, we first need to actually predict who will make the playoffs. And we'll start in the Pacific Division, and you can get a look at what it looks like right now with Vancouver, a 10-point lead over Edmonton. And you also kind of have the battle of the third position as well, with the Kings and the Knights tied in points. But to me, when we look at the top of the Pacific Division, even though the Canucks are 10 points ahead, to me, it's a pretty big story who gets that first spot still. Even though the Canucks have that big lead, the Oilers have three games in hand, and we just got word that Thatcher Demko is going to be out for a while, likely being rested for a lot of, if not the rest of the regular season, which puts a lot of stress on the rest of the Canucks goaltending, and I think they might crumble just a little bit. Giving Demko the rest he needs might cost him that top spot in the division, and when we look at it, I'm going to break the Oilers to get that number one spot and finish with 108 points on the year, with Vancouver right behind at a 107. But now we're going to the rest of that division of the playoff teams, and really, I think it's between LA and Vegas. Again, who gets that third spot and who ends up getting the wild card spot? And to me, it just feels like with how much Vegas loaded up, I would be shocked if they don't end up getting that third spot. I'm going to predict them getting 99 points on the year. And for the LA Kings, they're going to be right behind Vegas with 98 points and getting that first wild card spot in the Western Conference. Then we look at the Central Division, which is also pretty tight and even has a story really in that top three on who's going to end up winning that division. you got Dallas right now with a four-point lead over the Jets, but of course, Winnipeg has three games in hand, so really every team here controls their destiny for the future. To me, especially in the Western Conference, seeding is going to be so especially important. If a team like the Stars are able to get that top spot in the Western Conference, it would take them from facing a team like LA to a team like the Nashville Predators. And to me, that matters a whole heck of a lot with the playoff picture. Now, looking to what the Central Division could look like by the end, I'm still going to predict Dallas to get that first spot in the Central, getting 110 points. I see Winnipeg a little bit behind them at 107, but getting that home ice advantage, which to me is especially important, and for Colorado being right behind them at 106 points. As for the second wild card team, I see that being the Nashville Predators, right behind LA with 97 points, but still placing in that second spot. Now we go on to the East and the Metro Division, which is its own cluster of weirdness right now. You've really got a top battle between Carolina and New York for that divisional lead. But then you kind of got the rest with the Islanders really pushing as of late six straight wins and the Flyers right above them. You still kind of have the Washington Capitals in the race who are 7-2-1 and one in their last 10. But really, I think we can kind of all count out Pittsburgh and New Jersey in the race at this point with just how disappointing they've been. For the top of the Metro Division, though, I'm going to predict the Carolina Hurricanes to leapfrog the Rangers and overtake that spot. The deadline acquisitions, I think, will be huge for them down the stretch and in the playoffs. I think will really propel them in a big way. And you had that huge win versus Calgary. You've really had a few big wins recently. And I think Carolina is going to keep the momentum with 107 points. Though I see the Rangers being right behind them with 106 points on the year. And then we go on to the rest of the Metro, which is kind of a toss of everything. I mean, it's really random what could happen at this point. But I mean, considering just how hot this team has been, it's hard not to predict the New York Islanders get the third spot in the Metro. Six straight wins, and they're right now only two points behind Philly with two games in hand. And so far, the Wah effect has fully come through with this Islanders roster, and I think they'll get that third spot in the Metro. Now, we're going to wait just a minute here to talk about the wildcard teams and the picks there because we need to talk about the rest of the East and the Atlantic Division. And we, of course, have that battle for the top spot in the Atlantic with Florida and Boston only having one point remaining. But I would say Florida likely takes that spot. You have Toronto in no man's land and then really the two teams battling for wildcard spots in Tampa and Detroit with the Red Wings losing five straight, which definitely brings some tension to the rest of this year. 
Now, I do think the top spot will be Florida's in the end, getting 111 points, winning the President's Trophy this season. As for the Boston Bruins, I see them right behind them, just like they are right now, finishing with 110 points on the year. Then I got Toronto with 103 points, again, kind of in that weird middle of the Atlantic Division. And then we go on to the wild card spots. To me, you could make the case for so many different teams in these positions. If you assume the Islanders will get that third spot, really, it's between the Flyers, Capitals, Lightning, and Red Wings. And... It's going to be one heck of a battle there. All of these teams have kind of shot themselves in the foot at different points, which makes this one a really hard one to predict. I was kind of leaning towards maybe Washington getting one of these spots, but they have the hardest schedule by far in the entire NHL left this year, and I just don't really see them getting over that and being able to string many wins together. As for my playoff predictions here, I'm going to predict the Flyers just to miss with 92 points, and both the Lightning and the Red Wings getting those final wildcard spots in the East with 94 points and 93 points respectively. This one feels almost impossible to predict. I mean, Philly could still go on a run, but with their recent play being inconsistent, John Tortorella being out, and of course the trade deadline deals where they ultimately sold to the deadline, I think it might cost them some positions. I think Detroit, even though they've lost five straight, is going to somehow just, just crawl into the playoffs, somehow find a way to get that last spot. And with 93 points, I think they'll just be able to get there. But now with all the seeds and all the playoff teams officially locked in, we can now go to the NHL playoffs and predict who will ultimately win the Stanley Cup this year. And we first start out in the first round with the Western Conference, first with the Stars versus Predators. And to me, this one will definitely be pretty lopsided, even though I always believe Nashville will be a playoff team this year and it's looking pretty good there. I do think in the playoffs, the Stars are going to be on a different level there. And for the Stars, this would be by far the best opponent to play. The Predators do have some good bright spots and maybe Soros is able to pull out a miracle in the playoffs but i just don't see it versus a stars team that's loaded from top to bottom and i think they'll get past the first round then i got jets versus avalanche and this is why seeding is so important i honestly think whoever gets home ice advantage wins this series both the jets and the avalanche have been so dominant at home but especially the avalanche who i think are like 26 and 6 or something it's absolutely insane but the Avs being on the road and also some of the injuries, you got Logan O'Connor, doesn't look like Landis Cog's going to be back. And even though I love their trade deadline, I think the Jets might just have enough to get by. Connor Hellebuck's going to have a great first round, and the Jets are going to win in seven games. Now we go into the Pacific Division matchups and the Oilers versus Kings, one that is literally a broken record at this point. And unfortunately for the Kings, even though they made a lot of different moves to change the roster over the past year, I think the result is going to be similar. I think the Oilers are going to win 4-2 and continue to absolutely own them. Then we go to the last playoff matchup in the West in the first round. And this one might be the most interesting first round matchup out of all of them. And then it's the Vancouver Canucks versus the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, Mark Stone is ready to go for game one, like a lot of people are assuming. That definitely is an advantage towards Vegas. But I feel like with Vancouver, I wouldn't count them out in this series. Even though Vegas made all the trade and the acquisitions, Vancouver made them a little bit beforehand. I think that might bring some more chemistry by the time the playoffs come along. I think Vancouver's defense has been underrated, especially as of late. They've been really solid as of late too. The home ice advantage, I think, will be huge. And if Thatcher Demko is healthy, if he's 100%, they rest him and he's ready to go for the playoffs, I think that is a major advantage over Vegas, even if Aiden Hill has proved to be solid in the playoffs. I think in the end, the home ice advantage will be huge in this one, and the Canucks are going to advance on to the second round, winning in seven games. It just feels like whoever makes the most additions at the deadline are, are, is never really the team to advance far in the playoffs. And I think for Vegas, the fact that they made so many moves so late, I think actually might come back to bite them. And Vancouver with the more chemistry-filled team lineup and, and everything going for them goaltending-wise, I think we'll put them over the top. Now we go on to the Eastern Conference, and first up, we got the Panthers versus the Red Wings. And as much as I think the Red Wings have proved a lot, of course, making the playoffs in these predictions, the Panthers are going to molly -wop them. I mean, that last game, Florida versus Detroit, was just absolutely lopsided. And I think it's going to continue that way. The only sweep in my entire playoff predictions, Florida against Detroit. Then we keep going with the Bruins versus the Leafs, and the Bruins will continue to own the Leafs here, even though the Leafs, again, kind of like the Kings, have made a lot of additions. I think the Bruins have just proved to be their daddy in so many different ways, and in that last matchup as well, proved so much versus them too. The goaltending is going to be a massive, humongous advantage. The defense is just more complete in Boston side, and even though I would give the forward advantage to Toronto, I just don't think it's going to matter in the end, and I see the Bruins winning 4-2 in that series. You also got Hurricanes versus Lightning. This is one that's going to be absolutely electric. 
But I think again with the Hurricanes, and I, I think especially adding some star power at the deadline this year is really going to be exactly what they needed and exactly what will prove to bring some success in the playoffs this year. I think the Hurricanes will get over the lighting again in six games and back-to-back -back first round exits for the Bolts. Not too good there. But now we got the last playoff matchup between the Rangers and the Islanders, and this would be a great series for so many reasons. Rangers and Isles fans would basically start World War III in the metropolitan area. It would be hilarious to watch. But this one is one that I don't think you can count out the Islanders in with how much Wah has kind of transformed that defense. They're right now, since Wah has been hired, the best team in terms of expected goals against per 60 at 5-on-5. Five five. They have been absolutely fantastic on defense. Sorokin, and Ivan could provide some great ability when he needs to do. And this is one that I think is going to be extremely close. I think it's going to go seven games, and we always see some upsets. I think this is going to be the biggest one, and I think the Islanders are going to win in seven games versus the Rangers, and I think it is going to absolutely explode that Rangers fan base with how much was promised this year, with how much they were supposed to be better. The lack of results are going to definitely suck here. Next up, we go into the second round, and next up, we have the Stars versus the Jets, and this is one that I actually kind of consider the Jets maybe winning in the end, but I just feel like they might have some issues all around by the time the second round hits, and I think the Stars are going to end up winning this series in six. Again, I think the Stars' depth, especially on the forward group, is going to really be big. I think Chris Tanev is going to be a huge series, and hopefully Jake Ottinger can stay healthy in the playoffs and have a playoffs that I think he deserves to have, and I think the Stars will move on to the Western Conference Final there. And then you got Oilers versus Canucks. And this is the thing, almost every year we see underdogs perform well, put up some big numbers, win series, and go far. And in this series, I definitely think the Canucks will be massive underdogs. But to me, I think the Oilers still have issues in terms of their goaltending, in terms of their defense. And even though Vancouver also has issues in areas too, I think Thatcher Demko is going to have an electric series. I think he's going to absolutely carry Vancouver here. And they're going to get some clutch goal scoring. They're going to continue to absolutely out just out a percent a shooting percentage to everybody on everybody in every single league. And the Vancouver Canucks are going to find a way to win games, find a way to get leads early, and just demoralize the Oilers throughout the series. And I see the Canucks winning in six games and setting up a Stars versus Canucks Western Conference Final. Next up in the East, we have Panthers versus Bruins. This would be another electric series. Of course, a rematch of last year's first round and the bad blood would be absolutely insane. This would be by far the most physical, intense series of the entire playoffs. But even though I see it being intense and physical, I still see the Panthers owning Boston and winning in five games having it an even bigger decisive victory than last year's upset in the first round. But now we go on to the last matchup in the East between the Hurricanes and the Islanders. And I think it's kind of going to be more of a repeat of last year's first round matchup where I think the Hurricanes will have the advantage. And even though the Islanders will keep this series close, I see the Hurricanes winning in six games. But the big advantage being the goal scoring boost they've had this year with the additions on the deadline and just the consistency and the upgrades in players like Natchez and, and, and Seth Jarvis as well with the youth. I think the Hurricanes could be really interesting in these playoffs. And of course, Jake Gensel and Kuznetsov are going to be big parts of that. But now we go to the Western Conference Finals, and now we go to the Stars versus Canucks playoff matchup. And to me, this would be a disaster class for Dallas. For some reason, the Canucks have owned us over the past five years, and it hasn't even been close. I mean, every almost every single time it feels like the Canucks are on the schedule, the Stars just get mollywopped in the wrong ways and the wrong reasons. Everything, everything seems to go wrong. And we always see playoff upsets. Last year, we saw Florida come out of nowhere. Nobody would have predicted that. And to me, in every single playoff bracket, you kind of have to factor that in. And to me, I think that's going to factor in. Even though the Canucks aren't unreal underdogs, I think they're going to beat Edmonton, they're going to beat Vegas in the first round, then beat the Oilers, then beat the Stars in six games, and go on to the Stanley Cup Final. To me, I think Demko is going to have a playoffs to remember. And I think he's going to shut down the Stars in a massive way and be... Maybe even the Conn Smythe winner, even if his team goes on the lose. Then we go on to the Eastern Conference Finals between the Panthers and the Hurricanes. And this is probably the most predicted Eastern Conference Final, which makes sense. Both of these teams, I think, are absolutely the best odds to go far and to really push in the playoffs. But to me, I think, again, Carolina's issues might come back to bite them. The inconsistencies, the goaltending, the inconsistencies in the top end scoring. And even though they added some players to alleviate that, I'm just not sure if it'll be enough, especially compared to Florida. And of course, Tarasenko and Odd added on to everything they already have on the roster. 
And to me, I think that top six is going to be a big advantage for Florida. I think the defense could come up in some big ways against the Canes as well. And that goaltending, I think Bobrovsky is going to have another great run and put the Panthers back in the cup final for the second straight year, setting up a Panthers versus Canucks Stanley Cup final. And this cup final will be absolutely electric. You have the most intense team in the league with Florida, and you also have the most improved team in the league in the Vancouver Canucks, who hadn't even made the playoffs the year before and going to the cup final the very next season. Rick Tockett and Thatcher Demko and all these different guys propelling Vancouver in a big way. You've got some star power there on both sides of the ice and a Canadian team back in the cup final again. I think we'll see Vancouver kind of be like Florida last year, where they come out of nowhere, rise to the cup final with some fantastic goaltending and this miraculous run. But by the time the cup final comes around, I think we might see the other team kind of squash the confidence out of them and squeeze every last piece of hope that they had. And I think in the end, the home ice advantage will be huge for Florida. I think their overall compete level and the systems they play are going to be a big difference there too. And I think in the end, in the Stanley Cup final, the Florida Panthers will go from losing to winning and winning their first Stanley Cup by a score of 4-1. to one. And the Panthers will get it done, finally. And for Vancouver, even though it would be absolutely heartbreaking to lose in the Stanley Cup final again, a lot of people, including me, didn't even have them in the playoffs this year to start the year, and this type of run from them was totally unexpected, and if they get it done, 100% deserved. I think this Vancouver team has all of the aspects, all the makeup to be a team that can make a miraculous run, but I think Florida is going to get it done in the end and win the cup this season. But let me know in the comments down below, what do you guys agree and disagree with my predictions? Who do you think makes the playoffs and who do you think wins the Stanley Cup in the end? I'd love to know all your thoughts because really the NHL is wide open this year. Even though I think, I think Florida is the favorite to win the President's Trophy, win the Stanley Cup. I mean, if they win the President's Trophy, they probably won't win the Cup in the end because the President's Trophy curse. There's so many different aspects to everything this year. So I want to know all your thoughts down below. Of course, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you guys enjoyed today's video and want to see more like it in the future. And of course, share the video for all the hockey fans you guys know online to get the playoff predictions out there and click on this card for all my predictions content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan and I will see you in the next one. Have a great hockey day and goodbye.